Hi, my name is Malika Anan, and this is a short overview about my recently published paper in Biotechnology Bioengineering entitled Glucose O2 Biofuel Cell Based on Enzymes, Redox Mediators, and Multiple World Carbon Nanotubes Deposited by AC Electrophoresis, then Stabilized by Electropolymerized Polypyrrole. We are particularly interested in glucose biofuel cells for a final goal of in vivo implantation to power implantable biomedical devices such as miniaturized sensors, uh, transmitters, micropumps, or artificial organs. For that, glucose is an ideal fuel because it has a high energy density. In addition to that, it can directly be employed from the biological fluid of the tissue or bloodstream as a power source. To construct a glucose biofuel cell, we need to deposit an enzyme such as glucose oxidase at the bioanode with a redox mediator, another enzyme such as a lacase enzyme with another redox mediator at the biocathode. So when these two electrodes are connected together and put in a glucose solution, Glucose will be oxidized to gluconolactone and generates electrons, which will be transferred to the electrode via the redox mediator deposited at the bioanode. Then they will be transferred via the external circuit, and when they reach the biocathode, they will be collected by the redox mediator, given to lacase enzyme, which will reduce the oxygen into water with a four electron reaction. However, it's not uh, simple as it seems, because enzymes such as glucose oxidase have a complex of three-dimensional structure where the active sites of the enzyme mentioned here in the right color are deeply buried inside the structure. Therefore, the, there is a difficult electrical communication between uh, the deposited enzyme and the electrode. For that, we need to use redox mediators, which will wire the electrons from the enzyme to the electrode, and these uh, redox mediators can be carbon nanotubes, can be uh, conducting polymers, can be metal nanoparticles, etc. Another problem for glucose biofuel cells is that in non compartmentalized fuel cells, oxygen is reduced at the biocatode, but likewise at the bioanode, and this leads to a decrease in the power output. That's why we need to use redox mediators which are much more faster than the oxygen in collecting the electrons from uh, the glucose oxidation at the bioanode. We have recently reported a novel deposition technique based on electrophoretic deposition under alternating current, of which we have published the US and the European patents and several papers dealing with enzyme-based biosensors with improved characteristics, and this includes glucose, lactose, glutamate, and hydrogen peroxide. The drifting of the particle, of the charged particle in the AC field is due uh, to the difference in voltage time between the two half cycles of the period. In other words, if I use these symmetrical signals, no deposition occurs, or at most we have a monolayer. However, if I use one of these uh, asymmetrical signals, uh, deposition of thick uh, layers of enzymes occur in a short period of time. We took advantage of this ACAPD technique to manufacture the biofuel cell in three steps. So the first step consists to absorb the enzymes and the redox mediators on the multiple world carbon nanotubes overnight. Then we have the ACAPD of each mixture to form thick layers as depicted by these stem images. And the final step of the preparation is the electrode deposition of an outer layer of polypyrrole, which has the purpose of uh, stabilization as well as increase in the electrical conductivity. This figure illustrates uh, the variation of the power output versus cell voltage of the constructed biofuel cell in a phosphate buffer solution containing 10 millimolar glucose under air at 37 degrees. 
So one can clearly see that we have a maximum power density of about 1.1 microwatt per millimeter square. It is worth noting that this power density is 10 to 100 volts better than most of the reports to glucose O2 per biofuel cells based on carbon nanotubes. For more details, I invite you to read the paper, and if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you.